welcome, 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 Josh. Welcome back. Um, so today we are talking about the conspiracy of the education system. And yeah. man, it's it's deep rooted. It goes deep. It's touched both our lives and probably pretty much everybody that'll be listening to this. It's, oh yeah. I was just read. I did some. Uh, well, anyway, you wanted to uh, let, let's lead off. You have a uh, you have some notes. <laughs> Let me look at my notes. Yes. Um, well, just thinking about it offhand, I was like, you know, uh, school is very much, public schools are very much like prisons, if you think about it. You know, you have the principal who's the warden. You got the teachers who are the guards. The schoolyard is the prison yard where the inmates slash students, you know, they group up in their little gangs. And if you don't get in a little gang, you get bullied up and eaten up, you know? And... Uh, but that's all just to, you know, give you a good lesson of life that uh, you better get down with the group think or you're going to get ostracized and, you know, if you try to make it on your own. I mean, it is the same dynamic in the corporate world. It's schoolyard, it's schoolyard shit, basically. It's, and it's taken to, you know, the mafia really is just schoolyard shit. It's all gangster shit. It's really just schoolyard stuff. And it, you got to understand those politics, I think, to be able to even make it. You don't have to take part in it necessarily, but you at least have to understand it so you don't get eaten alive, like you said. But then you, you mentioned making it, and it's like making it in the system that they've you know, created for us. I'm talking about having enough food and a roof over your head. Oh, <laughs> that, that's making it to me. Right, but in, in order to get that, you have to get the slave job, which makes it so you can't think about anything else, you know? Unless you're very fortunate, true. Right. But even, you know, people that are fortunate with money, they still have, you know, they still have their heads up their asses and they're not seeing what's really going on. It's true. I mean, I spend a good amount of my time with my head up my ass. So at least not, I try not to do it 24-7. <laughs> and then, you know, hope it works out a little bit. But no, I mean, I think it's a lot easier to live that way. I mean, if you try to be aware, I think too much awareness is actually, it can cause psychosis. I think that feeding your brain too much information, especially information that has um, emotional, is emotionally tinged, I think that it can actually drive even a sane person into an insane state. I believe it because I feel like I'm very aware, like super aware, and it, it gets very annoying. You know, when I go out, I have to, I'm looking at everybody. I'm sizing everybody up. Well, that's just, I think, smart. Right. When you're at home, it's hard to turn that awareness off, right? Right, yeah. So do you, do you meditate? Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's not in the, uh, you know, normal way. You know, just picking up the guitar and playing a little bit, that's, you know, a form of meditation for me. Alistair Crowley had a pretty interesting technique that uh, I actually use. <laughs> oh yeah and uh the first time i did it it was what happened was really spooky and since then i still do it because I, I find it an effective practice but that first time i still think about it and uh so the practice is you you know about mantras and you read your mantra over and over and over again yeah so he, the whole idea is you would do it backwards mm. so the letters and the words so you would just read them backwards and backwards and backwards. And I started doing, I had my own mantras that I invented. I would try different, different things, some gibberish, some kind of changing words a little bit. Some I was memorizing, trying to memorize um, some music stuff by doing that, just read it over and over and over again. Yeah. And try and, you know, I try and picture the fretboard like over and over and over again. Yeah. But the first time I did it, I started to say the stuff backwards and all of a sudden, I just felt like I was falling immediately. It was like the middle of the afternoon. Wow. Falling like really fast backwards, almost like you'd been, you know, on something crazy or, you, you know, in that mood. Oh, you haven't seen um, us and you haven't seen uh, Get Out. No, they, not they yet. They fall into this like hypnotic place called the sunken place. And they were literally falling into this, this tunnel. And I, it was it was crazy. Wow. I, I, yeah, and I'm not, it wasn't vertigo or anything, and it lasted a very short amount of time, and then it was immediately over. Hmm. 
But yeah, so I, that's what I use pretty much. Not exclusively, but 75% of the time. It's interesting that Aleister Crowley would do it, do it backwards because when you look into the whole Satanism, Illuminati shit, they're obsessed with every, the inversion of everything. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it's probably sort of evil. 